We grow up on them, we love them, we all know cartoons are amazing. But some aspects of cartoons spark curiosity that makes us crave some real answers. Here on Science, we're going to solve that problem by taking the scientific approach to cartoon questions that deserve highly analytical and science-based answers. So let's science the bikini off this bottom. A yellow sea creature that looks like a dish sponge has a pet snail that lives in a pineapple that never rots. His best friend is a dim-witted pink starfish who somehow has a driver's license. They both hang out with the squirrel from Texas who wears a spacesuit and loves karate. And they all live in a city under the sea 3,350 miles northeast of Australia called Bikini Bottom. So exactly why does Bikini Bottom defy the natural world? Let's nerd out a little bit. Bikini Bottom is at the geological base of a very important and historically significant island called Bikini Atoll. It's this island that the US government began nuclear detonation testing under the codename Operation Crossroads. From 1946 to 1958, a total of 23 nuclear devices were detonated on, in, and around Bikini Atoll, including the waters surrounding the island. The combined fission yield of all the bombs dropped was equivalent to 42.2 megatons of TNT. To put this into perspective, this amount of bombage could produce a mushroom cloud 120,000 feet in the air, three times that of what a normal commercial jet airliner flies. The unsuspecting result of Bikini Atoll was an island being coined the world's first nuclear disaster, with contaminated radioactive stuff called cesium-137 spread around in such high levels that no humans could live there. But maybe something else could. Perhaps sea creatures. This leads us to believe that the extremely high doses of radiation did something to the residents of Bikini Atoll. It created the brand new residents of Bikini Bottom. Most documented records of extremely high doses of radioactivity lead to a slow, painful death. Radiation can also lead to altercations in DNA. The resulting change could then code for new proteins never before seen on the surface of the planet, therefore creating special qualities scientists have never seen before anywhere except, well, maybe this. Bleh. Blinky looks much scarier in real life. And since animals that have high reproductive capabilities, such as crabs, starfish, snails, plankton, and squids, sound familiar? This could provide the correct formula for enhanced evolution in a short amount of time, which of course would result in normal sea creatures fast forwarding through evolution, taking on human-like characteristics, walking, talking, and laughing a lot like people. Knowing SpongeBob evolved very quickly into what he is today, considering he's only 30 years old, we must ask, how did he get this yellow square gene to begin with? Well, the answer lies not in a gene, but genes. If we look at SpongeBob closely, we can see that he's extremely porous, meaning he has a bunch of little tiny holes all over his body, which is the perfect place for microbes to inhabit. This network of bacteria living in SpongeBob could have begun to use the sponge as a host to communicate through complex electrical and hormonal pathways, much like a human. In fact, that's almost exactly how humans operate. This would explain why SpongeBob, his ancestors first, now have the ability to think, display emotions, and laugh. And under these new conditions, if this microbe stuffed dish sponge bred with a normal sea sponge, it could actually create a brand new living creature capable of reproducing itself. Meaning this newly infested dish sponge is so similar to a regular old sea sponge that it can successfully produce offspring. Hence, my boy SpongeBob. Upon further investigation, SpongeBob's favorite activity is blowing bubbles. But what this really might be is the nuclear bacteria releasing methane from the chemical decomposition or digesting of cellulose inside of SpongeBob. And just an FYI, the smelly part of a fart is methane. So SpongeBob is basically burping farts. You funky dancing fart burper you. Essentially, the same thing that's keeping him alive, nuclear bacteria, is also slowly killing him. Perhaps this is why his family has evolved so quickly. Maybe the bacteria has evolved to find a new way of replacing the cellulose through a new protein source. Krabby Patties, anyone? This theory would also explain SpongeBob's fear for pepper spray and dehydration as the bacteria living inside of him would easily be damaged by capsaicin, the active ingredient in pepper spray, and would have their cells dry up and die in the absence of water. 
So we have a pretty good idea about why SpongeBob is the way he is, a 30-year-old, overly energetic, talking sea sponge. But how did the rest of Bikini Bottom come about? The only two documented characters that were living prior to the nuclear testing in 1946 were Plankton and Mr. Krabs, who must have developed their enhanced features after the bombs were dropped. We've drawn this conclusion because Mr. Krabs' exoskeleton is primarily made of calcium carbonate, known to deflect radiation. However, Mr. Krabs also possesses human-like qualities that could only be explained by the radioactive stuff being sucked up by his crabby gills, exposing his internal organs to nuclear transformation. Plankton, a copepod, also possesses an exoskeleton and most likely evolved the same path as Mr. Krabs, making the rivalry between the two even more intense as copepods, what Plankton is, are actually a more primitive crustacean compared to a saltwater crab, what Mr. Krabs is. Either way, we know these two played an extremely important role in developing the infrastructure of Bikini Bottom. This is evident with the establishments of the Chum Bucket and the Krusty Krab as early food distributing centers allowing for the expansion of Bikini Bottom. Once Bikini Bottom was established, the effects of the radiation carried on, which can be observed within the social circle of our primary subject, SpongeBob. For example, SpongeBob's pet snail, Gary, or as SpongeBob calls him, Gare Bear, prefers to communicate in the form of feline meow. This tells us that Gare Bear is actually an intertidal snail that has developed a way of using his one singular lung previously used to survive low tide in the open air to create vibrations through his gills in a frequency mimicking that of a cat. But then this begs the question, does Gary always land on his feet or snail foot? Patrick, SpongeBob's loyal best friend, has clearly developed genes for extra myosin and actin filaments, or muscle tissue, giving him superstar strength, easily enough for him to lift his own house and drop it upon himself at will. And while Patrick may seem to be lower on the tide when it comes to smarts, it's obvious that his one central nerve ring has evolved significantly past what it once was, as a normal starfish actually lacks a physical centralized brain entirely. Speaking of Patrick, both Patrick and SpongeBob work at the famous Krusty Krab, along with one employee who always seems quite unimpressed with, well, everything. This would be the one and only Squidward. It can clearly be assumed that in contrast to all the other characters who gain physical attributes post-nuclear fallout, Squidward lost something. Squidward only has six limbs. This leads us to believe that his developed increased mental abilities, allowing him to create art and play musical instruments, also resulted in him losing two limbs. And let's not forget the only true foreigner, Sandra Sandy Cheeks, the scientist squirrel from Texas. Due to her constant need for oxygen as a warm blooded rodent, she lives in a pressurized air filled structure formerly called tree dome. This habitat is equipped with a plastic polyurethane dome, a deciduous leaf tree, and a very simple living quarters. With all this information, I think it's pretty obvious at this point that Sandy is nothing more than a genetically spliced human squirrel hybrid hired by the US government to keep data flowing from Bikini Bottom to her science research employer. <laughs> Obviously. Bikini Bottom clearly defies the natural world because, well, it's anything but natural. Not its history, its residence, or what will be its future. So what do you guys think? What's the strangest thing about SpongeBob SquarePants in his home, Bikini Bottom? Has there ever been anything that really stuck out to you? Let us know in the comments section below.